Hey everyone, Krista Moser here. Today I thought I'd show you how to make this cute little table runner. It's very festive, perfect for the season. I actually did this original hollow star table runner in kind of Christmas colors, but I did it this week in a 4th of July kind of a colorway, and I thought I would share how fun that turned out. There's no Y seams, it's very simple to do. Like I said, this could be done in an afternoon. I'm going to talk about some biased edges and how to work with those. I touched on that once before and it seemed to be something people really appreciated, so I will expand on that a little bit more. Now this pattern was originally done with the um, Creative Grids Large Ruler, so this ruler. The quilt behind me is the bed size quilt version. It uses the large ruler. I'm going to show you how to use the large ruler and how to do it with the mini ruler. When I originally did the pattern, the mini ruler didn't exist. So if you have the large ruler, you can do it. If you have the mini ruler, you can also do it. We'll start here with some strips. What I've got is a red and white stripe. Now I'm going to open that strip so it's just a single layer, pretty side up. Sometimes you can cut through two layers. Sometimes you have to cut through a single layer in order to get your angles to go the right way. Okay, so let's start with the large ruler since that's the way the pattern is illustrated. Here we have the 60 degree diamond. I am going to move it clear to the end, so I'm just trimming off my selvage edge. So you can see here, I'm just going to line it up at the top of the ruler and I'm just taking the end off. So I have a nice 60 degree angle. Now I'm going to move the ruler in until my fresh cut hits the four and a half inch line and then the two and a half inch line this way. So this is what I'm getting, a parallelogram. This is why we have to go through a single layer so that we don't end up with mirror image cuts. I'm going to do a couple cuts like that. Now for this table runner, you need five that are this stripe for each of the stars, and then one blue one. So I'm just going to give you a couple more cuts like this. Now I'm going to switch to the mini ruler. Mini ruler, very much the same way, only the mini ruler, you're going to cut the full width of the ruler. So we've got that fresh cut end along one side, the edge of the strip. Now I'm just going to trim off flatten the tip. Do one more cut like that. Just like that. That gives me five and I need one more cut. Now this is just a little diamond cut. This two and a half inch diamond line. So I'm just going to trim, flat tip, one more like that and then I'll show you how to do it with the big ruler. Set that aside. Back to the big ruler. Okay, this is one you have. Same line. Two and a half inch diamond line. You just have a lot more ruler that you don't end up using. So it's the same, the same cuts though. I got a couple more cuts out of this. And I'm always taking the little flat tips off. That's one extra step, but boy does it make a difference when you go to do your piecing. Just, just enough. Okay, we'll set those aside. Now, background. Here's my, my plain white background. I'm just going to do the same thing. Single layer. I'm going to cut the end off. And now I'm just going to move down the strip, giving myself some diamonds. flat tips. I like using the mini ruler for little projects like this just because you don't have to wrestle with a big ruler. It's a little easier to maneuver. I can get size five of those. Okay, so now for the simple arrangement. Let's set this aside. Here is how it works. We're going to do one white diamond, 
then we need one striped diamond and one striped parallelogram. That gets me a star point, just like that. We're going to do five of those, and the way this works, what I just cut from the strips, you know, these were cut from strips like this, so what you end up with is you've got your straight of grain edges across the top and the bottom, and then these diagonal cuts end up being biased edges. So when I go like this, bias and bias come together. And then this is a straight of grain edge, and these two are straight of grain edges. So when I go to piece this, I've got my little flat tip, so that gives me my perfect matchup point. Quarter inch seam, I'm going to press that seam towards the white piece in this, it'll be like that, and then I'll sew this one on. And that way I've got my biases coming together in a seam and then the straight of grain edges coming together in a seam. I actually did that here. That one's already sewn. So this is what I've done. I pressed that seam towards the white. Now straight to straight, because I've got my flat tips, I'm going to be able to sew this and use that flat tip as a matchup point. Now I have a little dog ear at this end, and the straight meets the straight. Both pieces are straight of grain edges. The bias one happened here. What this will give me is a diamond block where I've got bias on this end, the cut ends, remember, are the biased ends, and then the straight of grain ends are on either side here. Why that's important, when we go to assemble the, all the, the star points together, when you can put straight to straight and bias to bias, it will make your piecing go much, much better. So I'm going to kind of show you how that ended up working. Here's how to remember it. If you've got all your flat tips up, flat tip, flat tip, flat tip, all facing one direction. When you do all your seaming, then you end up with what I just talked about, bias and bias, straight and straight, just like this here. Then the next step, I'm going to have a bunch of these, and I need my backgrounds. These are triangles. It's a straight of grain edge here and a biased edge here. Now my triangles, I cut these earlier, and they can both be cut with um, the mini ruler and the large ruler. So my straight of grain edge here, I've got a straight of grain edge on the triangle, and then two biased edges. So I'm going to match straight to straight. Now this side of it is a biased edge. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I've got two biased edges to choose from. I'm going to put a biased edge to the biased edge. And that way, all of these will be straight. Because this edge is straight, this edge is straight. Bias meets bias. This edge is straight and that edge is straight. So now this edge is biased and this edge is biased. And the reason that makes a difference, you're going to sew these into large triangle units. Got some of those here. Already sewn. And you'll see. I think I'll show you from this side so you can see how the seams work. The way I wrote the pattern, where you sew that first seam here, you press it in towards your white your white diamond. You sew the second seam here, you press it out towards your, your strip here. And you do that on all of them. So then when they come together, your seams flip-flop here and here, so they'll nest perfectly, and you won't end up struggling to match your seam. Here it is. They'll nest up just like that. And what I just talked about, if you've got one edge here that on, on one side of this triangle block, all of these are straight of grain edges. On the other side, they're all biased edges. So when that one meets that one, and continuing on around, when you go to sew these two together, this is the trick. Because sometimes you can put bias to bias and then they'll stretch together. When you can put straight to straight, then they will hold together and they won't stretch at all. When you have to sew bias to a straight, which will happen, then this is what you do. Always put the bias side piece towards your feed dogs. So I'm going to put these two together here. And what I have is this one is the biased edge. And this one on the underside is the straight of grain edge. So I'm going to flip those pieces over. And I'm going to nest my seams. I'm going to go to my sewing machine with the biased edge one towards my feed dogs. What will happen? Bias likes to stretch. 
and the straight does not. So your feed dogs will work to kind of eat up any of the biased edges. If it's starting to stretch away, your feed dogs will do all the work to hold it in place. So that's why we put it on the bottom side. And you'll start here, and you'll start sewing, and then you can just kind of ease in and nest your seams as you go. And you'll end up with really good matches. That's the way this one goes. Now the whole star doesn't get sewn together. We're just doing it in two halves. So what we have here, and then I've got the other three. I've got my blue. Isn't that cute? And another red and white and red and white. You're just going to do two halves. So these three pieces, these three pieces. We're going to do the next one over here. The way the table runner actually gets assembled is like this. We have half half, the center star, it's actually an inverted um, trapezoid, doesn't look like the two ends. What we end up here with is um, half the star, half the star, same thing over here, and then these ones. And then the whole thing just goes together in two halves, top and bottom, so no Y seams. And by working with those biased edges, bias meets straight, put the bias toward the feed dogs, you will end up with effortless little matches in all of your points. If you're frustrated that you're losing your points or you get wonky edges because the, the pieces stretch out away from each other, try that tip where you've got, where you've got your bias towards the feed dogs whenever possible or bias meets bias, straight meets straight. The same concepts apply for the large bed size quilt. Obviously the pieces are much larger, but it's just as quick. Maybe not an afternoon, but it's a very quick pattern. But this is a fun little project, isn't it? You can have this thing done in time for the holiday, put it on a, on a picnic table for summer. It's a pretty, pretty great way to use up your scraps. Oh, one other thing I thought about. Each one of these little star points, since we like to use up our scraps, each one of these star points it doesn't use that much fabric. If you wanted to make each one of your star points out of a different red, you would really only need a strip that was about 10 inches long. So if you have layer cakes of different reds, blues, that kind of thing, you could do something like this with that. Fun, huh? Okay, well, here's the pattern for the table runner. It's just a single piece of uh, cardstock printed on both sides, very simple. These are really inexpensive. Unfortunately, this isn't available as a PDF, but we will put a link to the shop. You can find it in the pattern shop at kristamoser.com, and it's like $5, and that includes shipping. It can be done with either ruler, like I said, and then this is the pattern for the bed size quilt. Now, the pieces are much bigger, so it has to be done with the big ruler, but it's very similar in the same concepts, no Y seams, pretty straightforward and really fun to do. Thanks for watching.